Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is actually about a Ford head. Now, I know a lot of you guys keep thinking uh, all I do is Chevy stuff and small block Chevys. And then I don't know anything else. That's not true. I actually do LSs as well and small block Chevy and big block Chevy. It just, let's be honest, the Ford guys don't come in as often. So it's it's more rare, I guess, is what you would say in far as my business. Do I do them? Absolutely. Do I like doing them? Yeah. Doesn't bother me one bit. It just doesn't come in as often, so you don't get as many videos about them. So anyway, what head is this? Well, this is a Trick Flow, and this is there was their 205cc CNC ported head, and I got a chance to redo it to make it a little bit better. So this is a head that's been used before, as you can see some damage marks where things have been welded and repaired. Um, but so I had it. So initially it came with a 202 intake valve and a 1600 exhaust valve. Now it had been refreshed enough when whenever someone did it, they actually put in eight millimeter stems. The standard is 11 30 seconds. The stem being smaller. These actually take LS valves. So, however, when I got it because it had a 202 valve and, I, and this is on a 408 turning a little bit of RPMs, really in my opinion and the math kind of says you should run a bigger valve. So I've updated it to a 205 valve. So it's a 205 5 intake valve, same exhaust valve, and just did some work. Now, there's a couple of things I don't like about this head, but when I'll, and uh, one of those being the short side height. There's just not much of it. So if you're looking at it, that's all the height you got. It's pretty short. So typically, uh, and it's standard port and all that. Typically, when you've got, say, another head, doesn't mean make matter the manufacturer typically when you've got a short side like this it's usually a narrow it's a wider angle head so say for instance 23 degree small block chevy head that low of a short side wouldn't be a big deal because you know it's not as flat of a valve angle this typically when you've got a now i think these are 15 degree when you're that shallow of a valve angle usually you have a longer um, or taller short side so that helps the air turn as it comes in and usually the port is raised up to make up for that so you can think of that's the best way to put it that's like a 23 so i don't need much short side so you can think and this is being exaggerated that's 15 so now i've got to turn all the way from here to here so it's better to have more short side height this doesn't have it so as from a porter standpoint it's much easier for me to remove material than it is to add material so i you can't weld that up. I mean, you can. You can weld that up and add more height, but you're kind of stuck with what it is. Grinding is not going to help that. So the only other option you have for that is to make it wider because you can't make it lay back more. And matter of fact, that's a horrible thing to do because you make the, it's so much worse. So you like, you need to slow the airspeed so you can make the turn. In order to do that though, if you lay back the short side, you're making things really, really bad. So instead what it can do is, which is what I did, I made the bowls a little bit bigger on a Ford, you have to be careful though, because you can be really thin between the intake and the exhaust port. But I made the bowls a little bit bigger and just added more width to the actual short side radius. And did not lower it at all, just rounded it. Just kept the round curve going. That's all I did. So there's that part. Um, it's still a 45 degree valve job. I did not change it to a 50. But this head, you might be looking at it and be like, man, that looks a little weird. These are not lined, so your intake and exhaust valve are not lined, they're, they're twisted. This would be like your twisted wedge head, that's kind of what they called it. Now, twist, uh, Trick Flow does have ones that are in line, these just aren't them. It's always weird because people think that this swirls more, and I can't wait to show you the results of that, because it doesn't, um, it just doesn't. So anyway, it's got a really small chamber at 62 and a half, um, great. And I have to say, when I first floated, and I'll show you the flow numbers to begin with, it looks pretty good. And afterwards, it looks a little bit better. Not as much as you would think. Um, I'll warn you, because I've done some of these before, some Trick Flow R heads. If you look at the way the valve is, it really looks like it's going to be shrouded in this area. And it is. As the valve opens, it's kind of shrouded, and you would like to give it more area, which I've done before in other heads. It still will not help it backing up, because it cannot make up for that short side. That short side's murder. The other disadvantage of this head is the exhaust port. I did raise these up and give them more area because they're really small. Ford's exhaust ports in general are pretty small, especially when you've got your stock spacing. This guy's running a spacer plate, so I, I moved them up to give them more room for the bigger headers. 
Never take it off the bottom, by the way. It's bad. So raised up, made a little bit bigger. There you go. That's pretty much it as far as the head goes. And if you want to look at the intake port side, which I know you would like to, let me show you. The intake ports are fantastic on these, though. Besides that short side, if you look at every other part of the port, the cross-sectional area, everything is amazing on these. It's really great. Just not much short side height, but man, there's so much area. And it's, it's fantastic as far as that goes. So disadvantages, you got your exhaust port and the really short, short side height. But man, when you look at this, look how much area you got. A lot of different families of engines would be dying to have this much area at the push rod pinch and everything, especially on a stud mount. That's fantastic. Now, what's the flow, really? Well, let's look. Here are the flow numbers. This right here, this column right here is stock. And this is the ported one. Now, this was flowed on a 430 bore because that's the bore he's going on. It would actually flow more probably if I put it on a 455 bore, but that's not the one he's running on, so it makes no point. Let's look at the differences. So, this was a 202 valve, 1600, no porting. This is the 2055 with porting. Uh, 12 CFM gain at 100, but really, I don't really care about that number. At 200, though, 156 versus the 131 that it had before, that's a huge pickup. Uh, at three, it gained six CFM. At four, it lost one, so that was downside. At five, it went from a 295 to 292, lost three. And then at six, it went from a 313 to a 312, so it lost one. So you're like, oh, you lost. What are you doing with your porting? But look what it does here. Right after in stock form at 313, at 600, it starts falling off. And you could tell it dropped off pretty dramatically. Now it holds it better. So it goes 311 and then it jumps up to 318 at seven. So that's a huge, I mean, uh, you know, almost 40 CFM gain at this point at 700 valve lift. And I think he's running pretty close to that valve lift anyway. Even at eight, you gain in 300 versus 283 and so on. Now I know some of you are thinking, well, no one, no one has a cam that's there. So those numbers are just making you feel good. You're just, you're just bloating your numbers and whatnot. Now, the reason why the port usually backs up has something to do with airspeed. So if it's backing up on a port on the flow bench that's only pulling 28 inches of vacuum on a live engine that pulls much more vacuum, this happens while it's running. So it, the port speeds get too fast and it doesn't hold the RPMs as well. In other words, it doesn't carry its horsepower well and doesn't make as much peak RPM as it should. This gives you an indication it's going to carry the power longer and make more of it, especially in the higher RPMs. The exhaust side, it picked up quite a bit as well. So, I mean, a little bit, I should say. 109 to 113, gained two there at two. It gained about one there, and then six at five, seven. So it, it gained, even though the port isn't that much larger, raising up the exhaust port exit um, really seemed to help. So it's a vast improvement. Now, I wanted to say this because this is the, one of the weird heads where this has finally happened and I could share with you. So I always flow heads on the super flow flow bench afterwards. Usually those numbers between bench and bench, the super flow usually reads higher. This one was almost the same within two or three CFM. But what the super flow has on it is this little dude. See this? This is my swirl meter. What happens is this bore plate goes inside there and inside there, this spins. So as the air is coming down out of the valve, because the head bolts up here, the air comes in from the valve and will spin this blade here. And this will tell me which direction the air is turning and also how fast it's turning. And for the first time ever, this happened, at least I've seen. These are swirl numbers measured in RPMs. Now negative means counterclockwise. If you see a number not negative means not, it's, it's clockwise rotation. So 100 valve lift, because that, you know, twisted wedge, it should flow, it should have more swirl. That head's gonna have more swirl, it's gonna be better. No, it, this does not have the swirl you would think. At 100 valve lift, so this is valve lift still on the intake side, it's negative 285, which means it's spinning counterclockwise, but really that's 285 RPMs, that's how fast that blade's spinning. That's not that much. Look at two, it goes straight. That means as the air is coming down, that blade is now locked in place. The air is just coming straight on. It's not turning it. 300, it's 21. You might as well say it's still locked in place because it ain't hardly moving. I mean, really, really slow moving. And then at 400, 
26 CFM or RPM. Still hardly moving. Look at five. Now this, by the way, coincides with the part where it, these are down. So it's, it's down a little bit. Um, it's now reverse rotation, barely. So it went from being pretty much going counter or clockwise, but very, very slow to ooh, backs up in the opposite direction. Then look at six. There's our flow numbers. Um, now it starts going, so it's going counterclockwise, and nope, back to clockwise. And then once it's past it, and this is where the gain and the airflow came from, look how fast it starts going. Now it starts really picking up. 1400 RPM, slows down a little bit at 800 to let 1200 then picks up and then slows back down. It's one of the weirder swirl readings I get. Now, this is truly is just a tool. It really is. Um, you just use this information for headquarters and it, it's not like a absolute thing. It's either like a timing light. A timing light will tell you how much timing your engine has. It won't tell you how much timing your engine needs. This is the same thing. It tells me I've got swirl. It doesn't tell me how much I actually need. So it does give me one more piece of information and it's very rare that you ever see a head I've ever seen where it goes flat like this. Typically what happens is as the valve lift increases, swirl increases. Um, that's typically how it goes. In some cases, what will happen is, especially on the FRs with their wing, it will start here and will start climbing and then it slows down, not stops, but slows down. Then once it's past a certain point, usually about 600, it starts picking back up again. But it never goes completely stops like this or reverses rotation. That's pretty rare for me to see that something reverses in it. Does this indicate power or anything else? No, it's just one more piece of the puzzle to figure out. Some would argue that you don't need, there's, so there's two arguments I should point out. One argument is you don't need swirl because that's loss of energy. So think about it. If you go run as fast as you can, okay? let's say you're running as fast as you can straight. Now run as fast as you can in the circles. Um, how much energy did it take to do that? Way more energy to make circles, hence swirl. You have more energy being transferred if there was no swirl. That's one argument. The second argument is, well, that's great and all, but what about fuel? Fuel needs that swirl to keep it atomized and then burns more of it to be more efficient. So there's two arguments for it. Which one's right? I have no idea. But interesting stuff right there. So anyway, for you Ford guys, there you got a little bit of information. This head really should run better. I know it doesn't look like it so much how much it's gained there, but 40 CFM at 7, that's pretty good. And then the way it carries and even the exhaust flow, this thing's going to run much better. Um, it's going to be faster. But anyway, now you've got some Ford information. So guys, remember, I'm the Superman, which means I'm not perfect and I make plenty of mistakes all the time. You guys, take care.